Uh, NFC AFC championship games. We need to lube you up there, David. A little squeaky there. Little I got it. Hold on. Nafik and Nafik. All right. Thank you. A little bit of spit. All right. Let's move on to the NFC. Hawk, want to start NFC? <sighs> this is so much shufterfuge over, over so little reality. Two weeks didn't make the man's calf better. It One comes down sure to a, a, is a healthier Wilson better than an unhealthy Rodgers, right? Is that what it comes down to, essentially? Well, I don't know. I think it comes down to how well can the Packers defense play because a game like this, well, here's what you, here's what you pay your money for. This is strength against strength. Seattle's strength is defense. Green Bay's strength is offense. So you want to sit there and say, well, whoever wins that battle wins the game. A bit simplistic, but here's the thing that scares me. Seattle, in my opinion, has a lot better pass rush because they have a stronger secondary. Mm -hmm. Therefore, allows you to do more things with your linebackers, yada, yada, yada. And the thing was, is Dallas did their best to rush Rodgers. Rodgers has the advantage of a line that has really gelled this year, along with some some very good, strong running back blockers as far as picking up blitzes. All that's well and good. But if you can barely move from side to side, that's going to be a huge problem. And that's why this game is so hard to call because you don't really know what Rodgers you're getting. And granted, everyone keeps going back to the beginning of the year and saying, well, it was a lot different. We didn't have this guy. We didn't have this guy. This guy only played 10 snaps. Well, Seattle can say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of those moments where it really pisses me off that we had to go and lose to Buffalo in Week 15. Oh, Hawk, you shouldn't look in blah, blah, blah in retrospect. Yes, you should. Just like the fail Mary game, every game counts. Just like the fail Mary game fucked us over and took us from a one seed down to a three. Okay, same thing. At least this time they screwed themselves. Well, and I also you I also to said to somebody Buffalo. earlier today that uh, every game, I don't care if it's week one or not, counts. Because uh, somebody asked me how Seattle got into the number one seed, and I said, well, Cardinals winning, losing last week, Seahawks winning six and whatever the hell it was. But it really also came down to that they beat us. Us They beat the Packers in week one. Mm-hmm. That counts. Sorry, yeah. kids. That counts. So if you're going to worry about week one, week 11, NFC championship game, you need to worry about them all together. Hawk, continue. So that being said, you know, dark-hearted, cynical Packers fan, circa 1998 Broncos Super Bowl lost, in case you were wondering when that person was born. You know what? At the end of the, as the Cowboys game lay in the balance last week, I crossed my arms. I looked into the bright eyes of little baby Hawk, and I told her, this is just fighting for the right to get your ass kicked next week. And I stand by that. I don't think Green Bay has a chance. It's not because I don't love my team. It's not because I don't blah, blah, blah. No, just realistically, we have an injured quarterback, reigning Super Bowl champions, and I don't even want to say 12th man because I think it's so fucking stupid. Every single fan base cheers for their team. The only reason you guys are the loudest is because of the design of your stadium. And by the way, I seem to remember a shitload of Seahawks fans at games, oh, I don't know, like 10 years ago. Oh, my God, was that place packed. <laughs> Bunch of fucking bandwagon faggots. Uh, done. We're losing. Score? A lot to a little. All right. No more. <laughs> All right. I'm angry now. 42-10. Matt? He is right, though. The push is going to be between the Packer offense and the uh, Seattle defense because they keep alluding to how talented their offense is for Seattle, but I'm just not buying it. I, I can't name their Giant wide... Curse had a great year. Yeah, okay. With no Golden Tate there. And then they got who? Traded, Lockett. Traded Percy Harvin. Lockett had a decent year. I'm taking my Your chances. Your boy, with, Doug Baldwin. I'm taking my chances with eight in the box, that's, and I think that's the only way they can handle it, and you cannot succumb to this quote quote 12th man you just you got to go in there and you got to play football if fucking tony romo can do it you can do it i'll give rogers the benefit of the doubt i'll say 24 23 packers all right uh the line the last i heard was seven and a half coming out of vegas i'll take a quick edge out in this one and that that's gone up i believe from initially it was six at the first turn so david i think my key to the game is this how much, how funky are the Green Bay Packers coaching staff going to get to try to come up with something to control this game? There's something that I saw in in two games, one with Seattle, where the Packers decided they were going to uh, control the line of scrimmage. They were going to try to run the ball. They're going to try to keep the ball out of the hands of Jamarcus or out of uh, uh, Wilson, rather. Why do I keep saying Jamarcus? You're, you're stuck on the guy. And uh, all right. 
I got a man crush apparently on Jamarcus. Uh, played like one season in the NFL. <laughs> and he was on the biggest loser. Oh. No. No, he, no, he wasn't. wasn't. No, he wasn't. So, <laughs> and also the other thing, it, they did the same shit he in Dallas last week. Loser. <laughs> well, he was drafted number one by Oakland. That is the first loser, I do believe. They they kept trying to run the ball against Dallas, and there's there's two drives in that game that really stuck out at me. One, the opening drive, where they had a couple of big runs, but they were also passing. They were going downfield. They were challenging the, the Dallas secondary. Uh, the Packers didn't throw at Richard Sherman once the entire game in week one. Right. And at, to close the half uh, where they got the field goal to, you know, to, to go into the half down only, I think, four, the Packers were challenging the Dallas secondary. They were moving the ball downfield. They were challenging. They were keeping them on their heels. It's one thing if the Packers really want to control the line of scrimmage, and I think you can do that on a passing game too. You can really take out those defensive backs. You can run a hurry-up offense, but you need to be able to – challenge that secondary and you need to be able to be willing to take those chances if Aaron Rodgers is willing to get picked off if Aaron Rodgers is willing to challenge Richard Sherman if Aaron Rodgers is willing to to try to squeeze those balls and there's something that one of the great things about Aaron Rodgers is that he doesn't take a lot of chances well this is one of those games you're gonna have to take a chance and you're gonna have to put it out there because the one thing that I've seen about the Packers great set of wide receivers is that they have not caught the tough balls since Buffalo you go through Tampa, you go through Buffalo, you can talk about what they did against Detroit. Um, th- they have not made those big, oh my God, I can't believe he made that catch. Everything that Aaron Rodgers is throwing up, they're coming down with. No, they have not come down with it. And in a lot of cases, the balls that have hit him in the numbers have gone to the ground. Mm-hmm. And so I like what I'm seeing from this Packers team in the second half against Dallas. I feel like the offense was starting to click again. And I haven't seen that since Minnesota, New England, where it was just like, Jesus, that is a well-oiled machine. I see a lot of traits in this Packers team coming out of that Dallas game at the end that it makes me think that this is a possible upset in the making, that there's a very real chance that the Packers can pull this off. I try to go off of my instinct, my intuition. My intuition is telling me the Packers are going to take this game. Now, the other hand, I look at this as, okay, if I have $100 left to my name and I've got to put it on a team, I've still got to pick Seattle because on paper – they are a better team and they're more consistent. So I'm going to call Seattle 35, Packers 24. But I, I, there's such an asterisk, and this isn't me being a homer, there's such an asterisk by this game because I really feel like if, if Mike Sherman or uh, um, Mike McCarthy, rather, boy, I'm really going back in time, Mike Sherman. <laughs> if Mike McCarthy really decides to lay it all on the line and not try to overcoach or overanalyze this game, this is the game that the Packers could win. Not easily, but they could win. And another game that could end up being like, you know, 34-28 Packers, I, I don't think is unrealistic. But it's just a game that I just don't see. I, I, I've, I've seen too many, too many games in which Mike McCarthy... I don't think coaches out coaches the opposing team. Players have outperformed the opposing team, but I have yet to see Mike McCarthy at any point in his entire career in Green Bay out coach an opposing team. You can go back to uh, the New York Giants. You can go back to, uh, well, all the Seattle games, all the San Francisco games, games that we possibly should have won. They just, they don't, they don't have a game plan to counter and to beat the teams that they shouldn't beat because the coaching was so excellent, which is something that Bill Belichick has done many, many times. So just to be fair, I am picking Seattle. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers obviously is the wild card in all of this. We all just said that. Aaron Rodgers is injured. We all know that. He has been for a few weeks now. And the first thing I said when they won that game against Dallas is that you had two weeks to recover from that. You're only getting six days basically Mm -hmm. now. Uh, Now the Packers didn't start practicing until Wednesday. Got a couple of days of not using it whatsoever i get that uh it is still aaron Rodgers, though in the first half against dallas he looked like dog shit it was obvious the other thing that i took away from that offense after he got warmed up and started playing like aaron Rodgers, which i think hey if he can do it in green bay he can do it in seattle every single person said to me where the hell is jordy nelson where the hell did he go and i said time he, out he took a powder i said time out Think about what football is. It's about matchups, right? Mm -hmm. It's about inches, right? Your matchup is Jordy Nelson versus Joe Clusterfuck. Doesn't matter who it is, right? 
And it's not just Joe Clusterfuck, but it's Joe Clusterfuck's cousin, Billy. Okay. Because they view him as the number one receiver, and rightfully so. Right. You have Devontae Adams, who dropped a couple of balls in the first half. You have Randall Cobb, who on some teams would definitely be a number one, and he's emerged into being a very good number two on this team. Uh, maybe in another year or two, you could flip flop those two guys. Nelson just happens to catch the over the shoulder pass a little bit better. That being said, yeah, Jordy Nelson was absent from that game. He had two catches against Dallas. But what did Devontae Adams do? What did Randall Cobb do? They both had 100 yards. They both stepped up. This tight end that we've been talking about that has been non-existent since Jermichael Finley got hurt. David, you've been talking about it for a long time. Corliss, Richard Rodgers, they stepped up. They were in the game. Rodgers caught a touchdown. It helped propel them. Eddie Lacy ran well behind that offensive line. James Starks, meh, whatever, spelled him. I don't ever really expect a lot from James Starks. I know a lot of people, especially around here, like James Starks. I don't dislike him, but I think Lacey's the better back. If you want to beat Seattle, you fight fire with fire. Run against them. They're going to run against you. Marshawn Lynch is going to run. If Aaron Rodgers is able to be warmed up in part of the first half, not just the second half, and he continues to find guys that aren't the number one option. I believe I heard him say on the radio during his weekly uh, interview show that he does on one of the local stations here in Milwaukee that the Richard Rodgers touchdown through a progression was his fifth receiver. So if he can continue to do that on one leg in Green Bay, in the cold, with an injured calf, why can't he do it in Seattle? I think he can. Now, Matt, you said one of the best things that I could have come up with is that nobody on the Seattle offense, aside from Russell Wilson and, and Skittle Eater, impress you at all. Yeah, you could barely all. name any of the receivers, right? But mm -hmm. for some reason, they've continued to figure it out. The biggest thing that I worry about is, is that the Packers inside linebackers are not quick enough to cover people, but they might just be able to do that against Seattle. These are two different teams from week one. No Percy Harvin in Seattle anymore. I know I, maybe he wasn't that big of a factor in week one, but this defense is different. Clay Matthews is playing inside. No one knew what the hell they were getting out of Julius Peppers in week one. And Julius Peppers didn't play very well in the first three weeks because he didn't know what he was doing. Now he does. And I would challenge you to say that Julius Peppers is the MVP of the Green Bay Packers. He came in there, took over the outside linebacker position. So Clay didn't have to do it by himself. They moved Clay inside. That defense changed for the better for the rest of the season. I'm not saying they're top 10. I'm not saying they're one of the best in the league, but that changed things. You didn't have to have A.J. Hawk in there making 124 tackles a, a year. Now, they still put Brad Jones in there all the time, and that shit needs to stop. Yeah. I don't know why he's <laughs> ever on the field. That's Sam true. Barrington is playing just fine. Put yep. him in the game. But the fact of the matter is that everybody's going to need to fly around the ball Dave, I liked your point about they're going to have to do something stupid or different than what the Packers normally do. And maybe it's going to be I'm going to fake the spike and throw a touchdown against the Dolphins. Maybe it's going to be the Tom Crabtree play from a few years ago that they they faked the field goal and, and Crabtree ran it in for a touchdown. Statue I of Liberty. I hope that that's not the case. I hope that it's a well fought game, but I'm getting exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to. Oh, well, we need to play Carolina in Green Bay. Fuck that. We need to play Seattle in Seattle and show up. That's right. what they need to do and not sit behind some shaking fan base because they're so scared to lose that they want to play Carolina in Green Bay. That's horse shit. I'm glad we're playing in Seattle. <laughs> so that being said, again, I'm locked in. Yeah. It's right there. So if I don't pick it now, why the hell did I pick it in August? Green Bay, 26 and that's what they scored last week. Seattle, 21. I like it. And that's the exact score from last week. And oh, will they have a field day It would be the third time that. this year. That that's that right. Uh, so it, it's going to be interesting. You know, Maybe it comes down to a missed two-point <laughs> conversion or some shit like that. I don't know. But that's what this comes down to. This is exactly what not we've been waiting Mary. for. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. And that's why I said before we even started talking about this, that's why I said if the refs don't get that involved in this game and they realize the mistakes they've made in the wild card and divisional rounds, and maybe you let guys play a little bit, maybe there'll be some pushing and shoving, and I get that. 
But if you don't make stupid mistakes as the refs and don't change the game for the worse for either side, I want a, a hard fought battle. And if the Packers still lose that game, I'll be OK with it because this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a good football game to be able to watch in the championship round.